Hi everyone. First of all, I would like to say thank you to the World Aquaculture Society for inviting me to this conference and for giving me the opportunity to talk about the production and recent technologies development in the shrimp industry in Southeast Asia region. My name is Dr. Romino Vredi. I'm the Vice Chairman of Indonesia Aquaculture Society and also as the Director for the World Aquaculture Society Asia Pacific Chapter. I would like to start my presentation today with an overview from the Global Aquaculture Alliance Survey on 2019 about the production trends from 2000 to 2017. Based on the previous goal surveys, the industry saw signs of recovery in 2016 and 2017, resulting in a compound annual growth rate of 2.2% for the period of 2012 to 2017. From the global perspective, the graph saw an increasing trends in terms of the shrimp farming productivity. If we focus on the Southeast Asia region, we also notice an increasing trend in terms of the production quantity. There is a slightly decrease on 2015, but mostly due to the disease infection. After all, production has recovered since 2016 and reaching 3.75 million tons in 2018 and potentially for more than 4 million tons for the next coming years. Growth will be stronger in the Southeast Asia region, primarily due to several targets that has been set up by the government for several countries in this region. For instance, Indonesia already set the ambitious targets of increasing the country's shrimp export earning by 250% by 2024. Vietnam has a target of 10 billion shrimp export by 2025, meaning that from 850,000 tons of shrimp during 2017 to 2020, they, mean they need to expand to 750,000 hectares with 1.15 million tons by 2025. Thailand and Malaysia are ready to start the production again and focus on the control of the ESPND and other disease as well as to improve the water quality for better productivity, a better production system. Philippines, they would like to increase the production growth to be the top 10 of stream producers in the world. We know that right now, the recent trends in the stream culture in this region has been towards the intensive forms of the culture system, characterized by the use of the post larvae from the registered hatchery and free from disease status, relatively high density and have non-overlapping generation of streams. And but mostly, if we use the intensive culture system, we need to involve several technology. The technology, including the feed management system by using the sustainable ingredients, functional feed or feed management, water management system that include the aeration system, water treatment and online data recording, biosecurity system, and also enhance the culture system using the nursery and also the millennial and concrete system. About the sustainable ingredients, we need to cut the feed cost. Diet has been developed based on sustainability and plant-based protein source that replace the use of the animal meal, especially fish meal, and several plant-based protein has been used to replace the use of our animal meal, such as soybean meal, cottonseed meal, corn protein, and canola meal. If in the past, almost 69% of the animal meal used as the primary ingredients with comprehensive research right now, around 53% plant-based ingredients has been used and only 31% of the animal meal used in the diet formulation. In the future, we would like to reduce more the inclusion level of the animal meal and increase the use of the plant protein source complemented with the novel ingredients to enhance the nutritional profile of the plant-based ingredients. We have a research at the Club Petit Mariculture Development Center to evaluate the use of the plant protein to replace the fish meal. The application was performed at the 16 pond with size of 0.1 hectare per pound to be cultured following the commercial protocol of stream farming in Alabama. And our amino acid profile show that there is there are no significant difference in terms of the essential and non-essential amino acid, meaning that there is no significant impact to the protein quality of the diet when we try to partially and completely replace the use of the animal meal. If we look at the data of over 16 weeks of production period, we do not see any significant difference in terms of the final weight, yield, and survival, but we do notice significant difference in terms of feed cost and dollar per kilogram of feed. Nowadays, 
Feed technology in the Southeast Asia region also moved towards the use of the functional feed to provide important nutrients that can help to protect shrimp against diseases. This data was taken with permission from Dr. Loktran Lab in Vietnam using high protein DDGS that contained 25% of yeast and fit for the shrimp for 21 days of feeding period, one day of challenge test and 10 days of observation after the challenge test. The use of 25% yeast and high protein content could have to increase the survival rate after challenge with Vibrio Parahemiotico strength ESPND. The next step to increase the production efficiency is a proper feed management system. How we apply a proper feeding regime in order to enhance the growth of shrimp. There are several techniques that we can apply, including the hand feeding system, using automatic feeding system, and nowadays several farms in Southeast Asia region already apply the sound best feeding system. The sound best feeding system could optimize feed utilization to improve growth and feed conversion and produce a better quality product. Regarding to the sound-based acoustic feeding system, we have performed a comprehensive research at the Claude Petit Mariculture Development Center to evaluate the effectivity of this system compared to the automatic feeding and also the hand feeding in our commercial production facilities using 16 pounds. And our results show that the use of the sound-based feeding system could increase the biomass and growth and also cut the production period compared to the hand feeding system or traditional way of culture. Next technology, we need to more focus on the most reliable means of controlling the dissolved oxygen in the water. Therefore, there are a lot of innovation and technology development focus on the tools that can increase the solubility of the oxygen in the water. Future application on dissolved oxygen sensors that has been applied right now is how to connect the sensors to the oxygen tools so that if the dissolved oxygen level below the acceptable range, it will automatically turn on the pedal wheel or other tools to increase the dissolved oxygen. Farmers right now also utilize the 4.0 technology by using mobile data that can sync the data to the cloud system for better and easy access. Several applications also cover the feeding, the mortality, the way, the harvest, quantity test, and other water parameters analysis. And the service and analytics also cover the remote monitoring with notification, biomass estimation, and also the growth performance. Many farms right now using this technology, including in my production farms, and data from sensors could help the farmers become more smart and efficient to make decisions during the production period. Still on water management system, several concepts to stimulate the natural estuarine condition by creating zooplankton blooms as the supplemental nutrition to the culture stream and beneficial bacteria to maintain the water quality already applied and used by many farmers in this region. For instance, in Indonesia, the concept of symbiotic being applied that involves the fermenting probiotics, generally rice bran, and probiotics with enzymes to improve the pond environment condition. Several benefits that can be obtained by this system, including the disease control, the water quality control, improve the water quality, and also contain the fuel to sustain the good bacteria and provide soluble nutrients for the microorganisms. Other system that now that being popular in South, Southeast Asia region is how to culture the stream using the sustainable bioflock system and also using the aqua mimicry concept that become more popular in Southeast Asia region and also mixotrophic culture system. Biosecurity now being massively used and applied in Southeast Asia farming industry. And this consists with the practices to minimize the risk of introducing the infectious agent or infectious disease and spread it to the animals at the facility. And also how to avoid the risk that infectious agents will leave the facility and spread the disease to other sites or to the susceptible species. It is important to have better pathogen management by not sharing the equipment. Here you can see on the slide and also manage the people and equipment by this, uh, using the disinfection uh, food bath and also spread and also using the specific pathogen free stream as part of the biosecurity program. Right now in several countries such as in Vietnam and Thailand, the use of nursery becoming more popular to minimize the disease outbreaks 
since the outside nurseries can help to conditioning the post larvae before stocking to the grow out pond. But two things need to be remembered become our primary attention. First is the density. And the second one is how to minimize the stress of shrimp during the handling and transportation process. Therefore, proper density need to be applied and the facilities need to be close to the growth ponds. In order to increase the productivity right now, Indonesia also introduced the new concept, what they call as the millennial farming system. In this system, commercial ponds supported by a lot of 4.0 technology from the water monitoring system for the feeding management system, all integrated into one 4.0 technology to increase the productivity. However, if we talk about the challenge, there are two top challenges in Southeast Asia region. First is the broodstock quantity and facilities, and the second one is the disease outbreak. There are several broodstock facilities located in Southeast Asia region, such as in Sayakwa in Thailand, in Vietnam, also Vietnam and Indonesia, Global Gain Indonesia. But the production units located in Southeast Asia region still cannot produce enough post larvae to fulfill the market demand. So with future ambitious targets and expansion, Southeast Asia region need more broodstock facility, especially access to the disease-free broodstock. And the next challenge is the disease management. We know that there are so many diseases become the main challenge for the production sustainability, including the acute hepatopancreatic necrosis disease, yellow head disease, Tora syndrome virus, white spot syndrome virus, and myonecrosis virus. How to overcome this disease? Many scientists right now focus on several techniques, including the quorum quenching, how to block, to inhibit the communication among the bacteria, and also the use of the epigenetics, beta glucans as the prophylactic approach to increase the cellular response of the immune system of the shrimp, polyphenols, biofolk system, and probiotic system. But the challenge is how to transform these promising results obtained from the laboratory scale to the commercial scale of the production system. This become the main challenge for shrimp industry in Southeast Asia region. So as the conclusion for my presentation today, Technology has been identified as a driving factor to increase the productivity of shrimp production system in Southeast Asia region. And there is an urgent need to establish the captive breeding program for specific pathogen free, specific pathogen resistant, and specific pathogen tolerant broodstock other than Thailand, Vietnam, and Indonesia. 4.0 technology often increase the productivity by improving the input and output ratio, thus resulting in a new production function. And challenge now is our novel technology development to overcome the disease problem in Southeast Asia region. So thank you for coming to my presentation today and also see you all in Singapore on June 4, 14 to 18, 2020 for World Aquaculture Conference and Exhibition. Thank you, thank you, and thank you everyone.